Welcome to The Journey Church. My name is Jason Hatley. I'm the lead pastor here, and I want to thank you for joining me today as we wrap up our And It Was Good teaching series and prepare to turn the corner next Sunday to a brand new teaching series on the Lord's Prayer and how to go deeper with God through the Lord's Prayer. So we're going to get to that next Sunday, but for today, we still have a very important topic to talk about in this teaching series called And It Was Good, God's Plan for Sex in a Broken World. So if you haven't done so already, click that blue button by the live stream player, download your message notes so you can follow along with me today. Now today, we're going to be talking about something that all of us deal with, something that all of us face, and that is sexual temptation. And in this teaching series, we've been going back to the very beginning of the Bible, to the book of Genesis, to God's original design for sex, marriage, and dating. And, you know, God's original design, as he lays it out for us in his word, is for sex to be enjoyed between one man and one woman in the context of a lifelong committed marriage. But we know when we look around us in our world today just how distorted sex has become. And so instead of it being fulfilling Uh, and bringing satisfaction and joy into our lives the way that God originally designed it. Instead, it's bringing pain and hurt and disappointment and regret. And I'm so proud of so many of you in our church who have made life-changing decisions around this topic during this series. Many of you have said, you know what, I'm not going to live by the world's way for sex and marriage and dating anymore. I'm going to take God's path. And I'm so happy and so thankful that you have done that. But let me also say, just because you choose God's plan and God's path for sex, that doesn't mean that uh, you won't be bombarded with sexual temptation and that Satan won't do everything that he can to get you off of that path. And you know, the truth is we are surrounded by sexual temptation every single day. From the images that you see online, on TV, in advertisements, we really are bombarded with these temptations. And so it seems like temptation is lurking around every corner trying to get you to abandon God's plan for the fleeting desires of our sex-controlled culture. Now, to illustrate the difficulty that and the dilemma that we face with temptation today, I want to share with you two stories from the very first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis in the Old Testament today. And the first story is from the beginning of Genesis, and it is a cautionary tale of what not to do when you face temptation. And then the second story is from the end of Genesis, and it's an example of what we should do when we face temptation. And both uh, these stories not only illustrate how Satan likes to use temptation to get us off track with God and to derail our lives, but they also are just as applicable to our lives today as they were when these stories happened in the Old Testament. Now, the first story comes from early in the book of Genesis, from Genesis chapter 3, and it's the story of Adam and Eve's temptation in the Garden of Eden. And when you read the opening pages of the Bible, you see that God created the heavens and the earth. God created everything. He created us, and he said that it was all very good. And he gave Adam and Eve complete authority over his creation with just one rule to follow. And that rule was not to eat of a specific fruit in the Garden of Eden. And that fruit came from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So they had all of creation to enjoy with just one rule. And wouldn't you know, Satan comes along and he tempts them to break that one rule. And he tempted Eve and he tempted Adam to take their eyes off of the abundance that God had blessed them with and to focus on the one thing that was forbidden, the one thing that, they, that God said not to do. And, you know, Satan told Eve that he would, if, if she would just deviate from God's plan, that she will be so much happier, that she'll be so much more fulfilled in her life. And look at what happens next in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. It's our first scripture for today. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. Now that phrase in the scripture, the fruit looked so fresh 
and delicious. Doesn't that just perfectly encapsulate temptation and, and what temptation does in our lives? And so that's what Adam and Eve saw, and they gave into the temptation. And as a result, sin entered into our world, and Adam and Eve lost everything that God had created for them in the Garden of Eden. You know, that's what temptation does. It promises you one thing, but it delivers another. It tricks you into thinking that the world's way is better than God's way and what God has to offer. And oftentimes we feel powerless against these temptations. I mean, after all, the fruit does look fresh and delicious. But I want you to know today, you are not powerless against the temptations that come into your life. You don't have to follow the path that everyone else is taking. You can be wiser. And that leads us to the second story I want to tell you today from the book of Genesis. And this one comes from the end of the book of Genesis. And it's the story of a young man named Joseph who, just like Adam and Eve, faced a very serious temptation too. But Joseph, unlike Adam and Eve, got it right. And and listen, as we begin this message today, I, I know that maybe some of you here today at Church Online are feeling defeated by temptation. You want to honor God in your sex life. You want to honor God in your marriage, in your dating life. You want to honor God when temptation comes, but you keep falling into the same temptations again and again. Or maybe right now you'd say, Jason, I'm walking closely with God. These sexual temptation things you're talking about today, that's not a problem for me. But let me just warn you to be careful because I think all of us can agree that we're all just one bad decision away from hurting ourselves, hurting our families, and hurting our relationship with God. And as we're going to see in the story of Joseph, given those right circumstances, we could all make a really dumb decision that derails and destroys our lives. Adam and Eve, they made the wrong decision, and it led to so much pain. It cost them. But Joseph, Joseph made the right decision, and God blessed him. And from Joseph's story today, I want to talk about how we can escape temptation. So in your message notes, let's talk about how to escape temptation. And as we do, let me just kind of set the scene here for this story, because Joseph was the son of Jacob. He was the 11th of 12 sons. So he was one of the youngest, but he was his father's favorite son. And so as a result, all of his older brothers hated Joseph. They, they resented him so much. In fact, they hated him so much that they sold Joseph into slavery in Egypt. And so Joseph, their brother, ends up in Egypt working as a servant in the home of an Egyptian military officer named Potiphar. Now, that's a great name, Potiphar. It's kind of fun to say. Let's say it aloud together. Ready, go. Potiphar. So that's who Joseph was working for, but clearly this is not what Joseph had planned for his life. Yet even in this situation, Joseph honored God, and as a result, God blessed Joseph, and he was with Joseph. In fact, Potiphar grew to respect Joseph so much that he put Joseph in charge of all of his business affairs and his entire household. And just when it seemed like things were looking up for Joseph, when everything was going to turn in his direction, That's when temptation came lurking down Joseph's street. Now, Joseph was a a young man. He was a good-looking man. And Potiphar's wife enters the picture. And she's got a big crush on Joseph. And she's tempting to Joseph. She's making a move on Joseph. And Joseph has to decide what he's going to do. That's where our story begins and where we learn the first principle from Joseph for how to escape temptation. In fact, write this down in your notes. Refuse to entertain temptation. Refuse to entertain temptation. So the first way to escape temptation is to refuse to allow temptation to take a hold in your life. And here's how Joseph's story of temptation begins. He's put in a really tough spot in Genesis chapter 39, beginning in verse 6. The scripture says, Joseph was a very handsome and well-built young man. And Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. Come and sleep with me, she demanded. But Joseph, what's that word? Refused. If you're following along in your notes, take your pen, circle the word refused. You see, Joseph had a choice. 
He, he could choose to give in to the temptation. He could choose to flirt with Mrs. Potiphar. You know, by the way, what would be the big deal? I mean, it would feel good, right? We're, we, we want people to notice us, right? Doesn't it make us feel good when people kind of go out of their way and say, hey, you look good. I, I'd like to get to know you more. And so what's the big deal? I mean, as long as you're not actually having sex with them, does it really hurt anything to flirt with them? It's just a little fun, right? Wrong. Absolutely wrong because you are playing with fire. You are being casual with something that can destroy your life. So what did Joseph do? Joseph refused. He refused to entertain the temptation and her advances. Joseph drew a hard line and he says, no, we're not going to do this. This is not going to be something that we do. And that's the choice that you and I face when temptation comes our way as well. I mean, say, for example, you notice a growing attraction with someone that you work with, but you are married. And so how do you handle that? Well, you have to choose. Are you going to entertain that temptation and and flirt with that person, or are you going to refuse that temptation? You know, some people like to flirt with temptation. They think it's kind of fun. I mean, even if you have no intentions of acting on the temptation, you think, well, it's, it's okay. There's no big deal here, but it's dangerous, and it could completely derail your life. Remember, at first, Eve was just checking out the fruit, looking at how fresh and delicious it was, and that's what Satan does. He puts your focus on that, and before long, the more you focus on it, the more tempted you become. And so here's the key. Uh, The key that Joseph used to, to deal with this temptation was that he just refused from the very beginning to even entertain it. And that's key for you and I. We need to decide in advance how we will deal with temptation before it hits. Because listen, if you wait to decide on what you're going to do when the temptation is happening, you're almost always going to make the wrong choice and give in to the temptation. Now, to illustrate this, a study was done not long ago of two separate groups of college students. And the first group of students was given a set of questions about how willing they would be to engage in risky sexual behaviors. But they were given those questions in what the uh, researchers called a cold setting. It was a mundane boring setting, just sitting at a desk in the middle of the day. And then the second group of college students were given the same set of questions about how willing they would be to engage in sexually risky behavior, but they were given those questions when they were uh, in a situation where the researchers were attempting to make them aroused. And so their emotions were what the researchers called hot. What do you think the study found? It found that those students who were in the cold state, by and large, chose to resist giving in to those sexually risky behaviors, and those who were in a hot state were far, far more likely to engage in the risky behavior. Here's the point. The point is if you wait to decide how you're going to handle temptation when you're in the heat of the moment, when you're in the middle of the temptation, you are almost always going to give in. But if you will decide today, now, when everything is cool, when you're thinking and you decide, okay, this is how I'm going to deal with this if this temptation comes my way, then you'll be able to refuse the temptation like Joseph did. Here's what the Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 5, beginning in verse 11. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. Now, read the rest of this verse with me, beginning with, so be careful. Ready, go. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. In other words, don't play the temptation game. Refuse to entertain temptation. That's the first step. But we all know how temptation works, right? I mean, even when you refuse to entertain temptation, it's still going to try to lure you into its clutches. And so here's the next biblical strategy for escaping temptation back in your notes. Consider the consequences of temptation. Consider the consequences of temptation. You see, if Satan can get you to focus on how delicious the temptation appears like Adam and Eve were focused on how delicious the fruit appeared, then he can distract you from the negative consequences of giving into that temptation. But Joseph 
was wiser. Joseph knew what would happen if he gave in to the temptation. Back to Genesis 39, beginning at verse 8. Look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held nothing back from me except you because you are his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. Now, in Joseph's mind, he was very clear about the, what the consequences of giving into this temptation would be. And because he was focused on that, it helped him to escape the temptation. So what were the consequences for Joseph? Well, I mean, he would have, first of all, lost Potiphar's trust. He would have lost his job and his influence in the household. And uh, in that culture, in that day, Joseph would have also lost his life. He would have been killed for giving into that temptation. But most importantly, Joseph would have, it would have been a sin against God. And Joseph would have lost this close connection that he had with God and the blessing that God was pouring out on his life. You see, there's a lot to lose when you give in to temptation. But Satan doesn't want you to think about that. He wants to distract you so that you just focus on how much fun it would be or how good it would feel to give in in the moment. But temptation always promises one thing and then delivers another. Temptation promises fulfillment and happiness and excitement, but it always delivers emptiness, loneliness, and hurt. And when you give in to sexual temptation, the consequences are heightened even more. Uh, you know, you could acquire an STD and lose your health. You could compromise your character and lose your reputation. You could lose your marriage. You could lose your job. You could even lose your life if the wrong person found out and decided to do something about it. So the Bible warns against these dire consequences of committing adultery. In Hebrews 13, 4, it says, Give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. You know, sometimes we think that we can give in to temptation and then keep it hidden. Like nobody's going to find out and, and there won't be any consequences. But the truth is that it's always found out. And, and listen, even if you deceive other people, you cannot deceive God. God sees everything that we do. God knows. He, he sees it all. He sees your text messages. He sees your browser history. God sees the, the thoughts that you have in your heart and your mind, uh, the secrets that you keep from your spouse and others. None of that is hidden from God. So refuse to entertain temptation. Consider the consequences of giving into temptation and then take a proactive step to escape temptation. That's next in your notes. Avoid situations that lead me into temptation. Avoid situations that lead me into temptation. So here's the big idea. If you put yourself in the path of temptation enough times, you will eventually give in. So the best way to escape temptation is to avoid the people and the places and the situations that tempt you. Now, let's see what Joseph did when Potiphar's wife came after him in Genesis 39, 10 through 12. She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day, but he refused to sleep with her and he kept out of her way as much as possible. Now, if you have your pen handy, underline that phrase, he kept out of her way as much as possible. Because listen, Potiphar's wife was persistent. She was pressuring him day after day. She was not going to take no for an answer. And, I, you know, it would be uh, an amazing challenge for Joseph just to refuse her the first time. But could you imagine having to refuse her sexual advances day after day after day? That's why the Bible says that he kept out of her way. Now, you can't fully eliminate all temptation from your life, but you certainly don't have to go looking for temptation. You can choose to keep out of its way. So if you are tempted by a coworker, do like Joseph. Keep out of their way. If you're tempted uh, to go home with someone after being out drinking uh, and getting drunk with friends at the bar, here's a big idea. Don't go out drinking and get drunk with your friends at the bar. Stay out of its way. If you're tempted to sleep with the person that you're dating, then don't sit on their bed alone together uh, in, at night making out. You're putting yourself in the way of temptation. So the point is, avoid those situations where you are most likely to be tempted. Now, 
We, we say avoid them as much as possible because you're never going to eliminate all temptation from your life. No matter where you are in your walk with God, we are all tempted. Sexual temptation never goes away. It is a persistent tool and weapon of the enemy to derail your life. And let me just say, it's not a sin to be tempted. Okay, we're all tempted. Even Jesus was tempted. So it's not a sin to be tempted, but at the same time, don't willfully and willingly put yourself in the path of temptation. So let me ask you today to consider, what situations tempt you the most? Is it a person? Is it a place that you go? Is it something that you see online? Identify your greatest temptations and then take steps to avoid those temptations. But then also know this, even when you try to avoid temptation. There will be times when temptation finds you. And so what do you do when that happens? Well, that's next in your notes. Take God's way out in a moment of temptation. Take God's way out in a moment of temptation. Temptation always presents a choice. You can either do what you know that God wants you to do, or you can give in and go the opposite direction. But you always get to choose. And in Genesis 39, even with Joseph keeping away from Potiphar's wife as much as possible, the temptation one day literally grabbed him in a heated moment. Genesis 39, 11 through 12. One day, however, no one else was around when he went in to do his work. Now hold your finger right there for just a moment because this is an unforced error on Joseph's part. If nobody else was going to be around, if it was just going to be him and Potiphar's wife in the house that day, Joseph should have called in sick. You know, he should have uh, you know, had a sick day or a vacation day and said, nope, I can't make it in today. I'm not going to put myself in that position, but he did it. And so she grabbed him. She came and grabbed him by his cloak, demanding, come on, sleep with me. Joseph tore himself away, but he left his cloak in her hand as he ran from the house. Potiphar's wife would not give up. And you know, temptation is just like that. It's unrelenting. It keeps pursuing you. It grabs you by the coat, it grabs you around the neck. It tries to coerce you. And that's what happened with Joseph. She tried to coerce him into having sex. And you would think that Joseph would have been powerless at this moment, but he wasn't. Because even in the heat of the temptation, Joseph took God's way out. God gave him a way out, and Joseph chose God's way out. He ran. In fact, there's a word that the Bible uses again and again and again when it comes to dealing with temptation, and that word is run, flee, get out of there, do whatever you got to do, leave your coat behind if you have to, but get out of that situation. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It's our memory verse for this week, so let's read this verse aloud together. Ready? Go. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Now, if you have your pen handy, underline that phrase. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out. God promises to give you a way out of the temptations that you face. And that's what Joseph did. He took God's way out. In fact, he ran away so fast that he left his coat in her hand. And by the way, if you're going to escape temptation, you might have to leave some things behind you as well. Your coworker starts flirting with you or someone sends you a suggestive text or, or a, a picture, take God's way out and run. Block that number. Delete that picture. When you see that person say, don't ever send me anything like that ever again. If they keep pursuing you, ask for a transfer to another department. Quit your job and go work somewhere else. Do whatever you have to do to get away from that temptation that could hurt you, your family, your marriage, your reputation, and your relationship with God. Now, if your temptation is pornography, take steps to eliminate that. Put filtering software on your home network, on your digital devices. You know, put accountability software on there so that you're less likely to give in. And if you still find yourself giving in regularly, listen, get a flip phone. Uh, remove the Internet from your home. You say, well, Jason, that's crazy. Who would do such a thing? Well, I, let me tell you who would do such a thing. Someone who takes temptation seriously. 
Someone who understands that if they keep going down that path, it will destroy your life. You don't want that as your pastor. I don't want that for you either. And so run from those temptations that you face. That's what Joseph did. Now, we don't have time to cover the rest of Joseph's story, but his life went through quite a few twists and turns after this moment. But here's the key. God continued to bless and be with Joseph because Joseph was obedient to what God wanted him to do. He honored God and what he wanted him to do. He ran from that temptation, and he honored God in the other areas of his life as well. So to escape temptation, refuse to entertain it. Consider the consequences of giving in. Avoid the situations that lead you into it. Take God's way out when you find yourself in the moment of temptation. But then what happens when you give in to the temptation? What happens when you don't escape, when you don't refuse to entertain it, when you don't avoid the situations and you mess up and you give in and you go against God's plan? What hope do you have after you've given in to temptation? Well, the answer to that is the final uh, step in our message today. In fact, write this down. Return to God when I yield to temptation. Return to God when I yield to temptation. So what happens when you get it wrong? What happens when you eat the fruit that looks so fresh and delicious and you give in to the temptation instead of taking God's way out from it? Now what? Well, the best place to go after you get it wrong is right back into the arms of God. To turn around and come right back to God. Listen, God knows your situation. He knows how powerful the temptations in this world are on us. He knows that we're not perfect. He knows how weak we are in the moment. He understands this because his son Jesus faced all the same testings that we do, yet Jesus did not sin. That's what the writer of Hebrews is saying in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. So, so then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Listen, when you return to God after falling into temptation, do you know what God does? He, wrap, he opens his arms up wide, and he says, I forgive you. He forgives you completely. He offers you his amazing grace to remove the stain of your sins. That's how much God loves you. It's not that your sin doesn't matter. Of course, sin matters. Uh, it's not that there won't be consequences. There's always consequences when we give into temptation. And as some of you know firsthand, sometimes those consequences can be very, very painful. But God already knows your sin. He already knows that you gave into the temptation. So all you need to do is come back to him to confess your sins to him and, and to repent and say, I, I don't want to walk down that path anymore. And listen, when you confess your sins to God, you're not telling God something he doesn't know. You're just agreeing with God that that was a sin and that's not how you want to live your life. So return to God and receive his forgiveness. The, the apostle John describes it this way in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Let's read this verse aloud together. Are you ready? Go. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Listen, here's the truth. Every one of us face temptation every day. Sometimes like Joseph, with God's grace and strength, we make the right choice. We get it right. We refuse. We avoid temptation. We take God's way out when the temptation comes. But sometimes like Adam and Eve, we get it wrong. And we make the wrong decision and we give in and we have to deal with the consequences of our sin. But when you do mess up and when you do give in to temptation, you can always come home to God. You can always be forgiven and restored and receive a fresh start with God. As you confess your sins and repent and say, God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. I want to follow your path because I know that's what's best for me. Maybe today that's the step that you need to take to return to God. 
Maybe you've been sexually active in your dating relationship, and, and you know that's not God's best plan for your life or your future or your relationship. Or maybe you've been struggling with an addiction to pornography, and you want to break the cycle and the grip that it has in your life. Or maybe you've gotten emotionally involved with uh, a coworker or a friend who is not your spouse, and it's going too far, and you can tell where it's going, and you want to put the brakes on, you want to get out of that situation. Listen, no matter where you are, you can turn to God today, and He will give you His grace and His strength. He will provide a way out. And when you fall into temptation, when you come back to Him, He will forgive you. In fact, I want us to pray about that right now. Let's bow our heads, and let's pray together today. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank You for loving us and never giving up on us, no matter how far we run from you or how badly we mess up. Thank you for always allowing us to return home to you, to your unconditional love and grace. Father, we pray that you would give us the wisdom to refuse temptation, to refuse to entertain it, to avoid it, to run from it when we see it coming. And God, when we do fail, we pray that you would forgive us and restore us. Now, as we pray, there are some of you who are here today who have not yet experienced God's grace and forgiveness in your life because you've never trusted Jesus to be the Savior and leader of your life. And if that's you right now, you can do that. All of your past sins and mistakes can be forgiven. You can get a fresh start with God and a home in heaven right here, right now. If that's you, just pray this prayer with me quietly in your heart. Just say, God, today I admit that I'm a sinner. I've messed up. I'm not perfect. And I know that I can't fix all of this on my own. God, thank you for loving me and sending your son Jesus to die on the cross so that all of my sins can be forgiven and so that I can have a home in heaven. Jesus, today I'm putting my faith in you. I invite you to come into my life and forgive me of my sins. I don't want to keep living apart from you anymore. I want to follow you from this day forward in the fellowship of your church. And it's in Jesus' name that we all pray. And everyone said, amen.